today I'm going to cover something that I've gotten quite a few comments and DMs about, which is what are the best IB resources to use? There are so, so, so many out there and the number is only growing. So I'm going to try to narrow it down to a few resources that I believe are really the only ones you need for each subject. Like I said in a previous video, don't waste too much time trying to find good resources because everything more or less does work. Of course, do try and experiment a little bit, especially in the beginning to like test out some new ones and see what works for you. But after you find your favorite ones, just like stick to them. If you are struggling with a certain subject, then try out some of these resources and see if they help. So I'm mainly going to focus on the subjects that I actually took, which are these ones. But some of them will be applicable to like other subjects within that same group if that makes sense um in which case i will specify and i'm also going to end with some tips on where you can find past papers and also some recommendations of like other ib content creators on instagram tiktok and youtube starting off with english or like your first language i guess but i'm gonna focus on english here the one resource that i can say really helped me was the ib english guys which might sound a bit unreliable but they are actually two ib examiners who make really really good content on their website and also their youtube channel and they go through basically every single paper for english so every assessment along with the hlsa the oral um, if you're doing your EE, then there's also tips for that. And they also focus on the skills that you need for literature. So stuff like evaluation or uh, using like academic words or having a good voice as in like writing voice, not an actual voice. If you're struggling with really any part of English at all, so they also have stuff for language and literature, then I really, really recommend them because this is honestly, in my opinion, the only thing you need. If you feel like you also want another resource tryout, then I really recommend Thomas Lewandowski on YouTube. And he does a lot of good videos, especially for paper one and for the oral is mainly what I used his videos for. But he also has a few videos like analyzing certain works if you're doing them in your literature class. I don't think the ones he covered were any that I did, but for the oral assessment in particular, I used a lot of his videos. So he goes through like examples and analyzes like exactly what the student did or how you can basically form your evaluation for the oral as well he has this really great video which is kind of like a timer for each section of your oral that i used a lot to practice and he also has some like free templates and downloadables so those two are really all i think you need for literature i don't think there's like that many resources out there to the point where you have to go and like search for a lot but i would say these two are a good place to start next moving on to spanish or really any language. I'm mainly going to focus on Spanish, but the same ideas I would say could apply to another language as well. So my main recommendation for any language, like if you're struggling with it, is just watch a bunch of Netflix shows in that language. I literally cannot emphasize how much this helped me. Like I went from getting like fours and fives in Spanish to getting like sixes and even some like low sevens just by watching a bunch of TV shows over the winter break of my DP1. So a few recommendations that I have for Spanish are these ones. I really enjoyed all of these. They're more in like a mystery, thriller, crime type of genre just because I found that was like more interesting to watch, um, especially since it was in another language. I, I don't really know. I like watching foreign films when it comes to like thrillers and stuff like that, but I never watch them in English. I don't really know why. But anyways, make sure you have Spanish or your target language as the audio. That is super important. And then subtitles, I would use English, but then after a while, I would try to also use Spanish. Like every now and then I would kind of switch between them until I was comfortable with just having Spanish subtitles and Spanish audio. Um, I would say this is like really underrated because you can actually learn a lot of grammar just by doing this like i managed to learn the basics of the subjunctive tense just by uh watching these shows and like analyzing the subtitles you do have to be a bit proactive so it's not just like sitting and watching them but also i would like write down words that i had learned um i made these little like lists where i organized based on like verbs phrases nouns like stuff like that i would also sometimes try and repeat what the characters were saying to like get used to the pronunciation for spanish there are many different dialects as well so just be aware of that the based on the show you're watching there might be some like regional vocabulary and stuff like that which can also be helpful actually if you're writing for instance paper one where you have to 
be informal or something, then you know some words that you can use to make it more informal. Podcasts are another good one. Um, these are my recommendations. So I personally was not a fan of these like language learner podcasts as in the ones that were made for people learning the language. I know that a lot of people like these, but I just found that it was not similar to actual natural conversation and it was always simplified or they were, they would be really like enunciating each word or using simpler language and i didn't really want to be stuck at that level so i would just listen to regular podcasts that like a spanish speaker would listen to and of course with podcasts especially it is really hard like i will say when i started off like i couldn't understand a lot of what they were saying so i would do this after you can kind of understand at least some amount of spoken language for me, with podcasts, the main aim wasn't to understand every word, but rather just to like get familiar with hearing the language. Also, over time, after you hear it being spoken quickly so much, the regular like listening comprehension type of stuff you do in class will seem really easy in comparison, which I also really liked. Another thing I did to practice writing was writing a diary. So I wouldn't really write in it every single day, but just like if I had some spare time, I would just write down what I was doing that day, try and incorporate some new words I had learned. And I just had like a really small notebook that I could take around with me anywhere. And for Spanish specifically, I really recommend Spanish Dict if you want to improve your grammar. So they have these like grammar drill exercises where you can basically select like which tenses and which pronouns you want to practice. And then it just gives you a bunch of exercises. So you can really just reinforce the grammar if that's something you're struggling with. Next for economics, so as for textbooks, these are the two that I really recommend. Pearson one for just like general understanding and when you're starting off a new topic because I feel like it explains it in a more clear and like simple way. And then the Cambridge one is good for more detailed things like if you want to understand exactly how a diagram works. For exam technique, which is something I think a lot of people don't understand how important it is in order to actually write the exams in a way that fulfills the IB criteria. I really recommend Econ Plus Doll, specifically this playlist that he has on his channel where he goes through every single exam and exactly how you should approach it, how you should divide your time, what you should prioritize, and everything like that. For actual content, I would suggest Jason Welker, who is actually a co-author of the Pearson textbook, so he is like a reliable person. And he does really good videos on just like each subtopic and everything is super clear, like the diagrams are well written, he has good definitions for things, and I would normally put these on like 1.5x speed or just to go through it a little bit faster. And then Crash Course, I would normally watch these more for fun, like if I didn't really feel like studying someday or if I just really didn't understand the topic because they break it down really well. It doesn't follow the IB syllabus, I think it's based on the AP curriculum, so like the US one, but nonetheless like it's animated really well and it's fun and light. Next, moving on to to biology. If you're doing HL, you might need some more in-depth resources than this. So for YouTube, I really, really loved Cheryl Hickman's videos. So she explains everything really well and it's in like a fun and understandable way. Her videos are really long though, I will say. Some of them are like close to an hour long, so I would always, always watch these on 2x speed. As for textbooks, I only ever used these two. I really don't think you need any more textbooks. From what I've heard, like the Cambridge books and stuff for biology are not good. I think there might be new textbooks now because the biology syllabus has changed, but I would assume Oxford is still the best publisher for biology. I don't know, unless something has changed. And then for practice questions, so I originally used this website IIT which has questions divided by the subtopic so that was an easy way to just quickly get through some questions. I would mainly do the paper one questions on there which were multiple choice just to like go through something quickly but for a more detailed and thorough revision I would recommend either doing past papers or some of the like exam style question resources that I'm going to talk about at the end. Next, moving on to math, I took AIHL, so these are going to be a little more AI oriented, but most of them I think you can still use for AA as well. Revision Village is really the main one. Uh, you've definitely heard of this already, but I really think it's like the ultimate resource for IB math. I would suggest getting the gold um, or like premium subscription as soon as possible if you can. I would say it was really worth it. So what I really liked about Revision Village more than any other resource was their explanation videos. So under each question, they have a detailed video solution for each step 
they go through how to use the calculator for it, how to find the relevant formulas, how to apply them, and like the reasoning behind everything. So it's really helpful if you are stuck on a question compared to like I often found that if I was working from the textbook instead and I got stuck on a question, then I might like write it down or circle it for later to ask for help about it, but then I would never get back to it. So by doing this, you have like the answer accessible to you at all times as well as an explanation to it. But yeah, that would be my main reason for recommending Revision Village. If it's for the actual questions, you can really just find those for free on like past papers. If you're doing AI, then it could be more worth it because there's not as many past papers for AI. I also really recommend the Hodder practice workbook. So for AI especially, this was really helpful to get more exam style questions. For math textbooks, there aren't really any that I would really recommend. All of them that I used were like kind of mediocre. I mainly used the Oxford one. Almost every single chapter had some mistakes in the answer key, so I would not necessarily recommend it. For YouTube channels, I watched a lot of videos from this one channel, 3 Blue, 1 Brown. I, I always forget if it's 3 Brown, 1 Blue, or 3 Blue, 1 Brown. I think I started watching these videos around like mox season. So like end of DP2, he does a really good job of explaining math in like an intuitive way and the animations are also really nice. I just started watching these because I was starting to really lose motivation with math because it's just getting really exhausting and I feel like watching these helped sort of inspire me a little more and just to find math a bit more interesting. Lastly, for the subjects, I took business management as my final subject, so I did it at SL. I would say this is also enough for HL as well. So the textbook that I used was the Paul Huang one. I think the fourth edition was relevant to my syllabus, but from now on it will be the fifth edition. This one was decent, like there are some like typos and some errors here and there, but it's explained clearly and it works. I also relied on this a lot because I was taking business management as an online course, so I didn't have like a teacher to like teach every single topic, it was more that I had to self-study everything. One really underrated resource for business management is this quantitative skills workbook which i believe is also by paul huang and this is basically great for any sort of finance practice so finance was previously a huge part of paper two I'm not really sure how it is anymore but nonetheless it is like a big chunk of the syllabus so i would use this workbook a lot i think i went through the questions like at least three times in total because you can just do them and then erase your answers and then redo them for business measurement overall like reading the news is also helpful if you are just confused about some terminology or something or you just want to see something in a real context like you can always search up the vocabulary you're learning and then there's very likely a news article about it. This online study guide is also really good by OSC, so this just goes through all of the subtopics in like a more condensed way. For videos, I would also use this one YouTube channel where this girl just like explains every topic in a pretty simple way. I think she was also a business management student, so just keep that in mind when you're watching videos that it's not made by like a teacher or anything. Lastly, I want to talk about past papers and where to find past papers. My main recommendation would be to ask your teachers because they have access to past papers at least most of the time and that's, this is like also like a safe way to get it so if they just send over the files to you sometimes they don't have the past papers though or at least not all of them in which case you can search for them online i think i found most of mine on reddit or just by like googling economics hl past papers and then clicking on whatever website came up. Do be careful when you're doing this because there are a lot of like scammy websites out there. Another resource that came out recently is Revision Dojo, which I talk about all the time. It's such an amazing resource. They have organized questions for every single subject. It's very thorough and you can make your own like personalized quizzes. There is like a community on there and it's really great. You can also find the actual past papers there. So they do have, I think, Maybe not all of them, but most past papers for each subject, level, and year. If you do find past papers or like any resources, I really, really recommend downloading everything and storing it on your computer or on a hard drive because things get taken down all the time, like especially when it comes to past papers. I had so many instances where I would find a really good resource or like find a website that had past papers and then literally like the next day it would get taken down. So do save everything. My main recommendation would be Revision Dojo because it's also safer than going on random websites. 
Lastly, I wanted to end with some IB creators on social media, both like entertainment related stuff and also places you can find IB advice. So on TikTok, the main accounts that I got advice from, I guess, is these two. So both of them provided like IB advice and also like relatable videos and stuff like that. Around the IB exams, a lot of people do post about them on TikTok, which is also like something I enjoyed watching because it's fun to just see everyone like bonding over a really stupid question or like just like how difficult a certain exam was. So that's also fun. There are those kinds of IB communities online. For YouTube, I mainly watched Katie Tracy's videos. She was like the OG IB creator on YouTube. I would say probably also the biggest one. She did found an organization called I Believe, which also has more general IB related resources. And then I also watched some videos from Marcos Dracos, who covers pretty much everything related to IB. He has a bunch of videos on everything, so I really enjoyed watching those. On Instagram, Revision Dojo also has an Instagram account where they post tips. And then I Believe also has a lot of like little guides to different aspects of IB or like different subjects. So yeah, I think that is everything for IB resources that I can think of. These are pretty much the main ones that I used. Like I said in the beginning, like don't waste too much time collecting resources, but rather focus on actually using them and seeing whether they work for you. If you want any like more detailed explanations on anything or just like some further tips, then leave a comment. I hope you found this helpful, whether you're going into dp1 or dp2 and yeah that is all